Hey guys, thanks for watching another review here at Cinematics. I'm your host, Jordan Ross, and today I'm reviewing Season 1 of The Punisher. Now aside from Iron Fist, I've really enjoyed Netflix's Marvel shows, so needless to say, I was really excited for The Punisher, especially since his action sequences in Season 2 of Daredevil are among the best in any Marvel TV show. So my expectations were really high going in, and I'm happy to say that somehow, this show exceeded all of them. This is a really tricky character to make work, especially today. We live in a world where gun control is a major topic, and mass shootings are occurring at an alarmingly high rate. So it's safe to say when the only superpower of your main protagonist is violently murdering mass numbers of people with guns, you're gonna have your work cut out for you to make him sympathetic to the audience. Yet somehow, John Bernthal does just that. He makes you relate to this character and care about him, despite frequently seeing him take part in some morally questionable, extreme actions acts of violence, and that's not easy to do. There are times where Bernthal is absolutely terrifying, as he beats, shoots, and tortures countless bad guys. But there are also times where he's especially gentle and sweet, and you can see how big this character's heart is. And that's what makes him so relatable, his humanness. He's not all good, but he's not all bad either, which really can be said of all humans. Bernthal not only gives us the best Frank Castle we've ever seen on the big or small screen, but he gives one of the best performances on TV this year. Another standout is Eben Moss Backrack as Micro, Frank Castle's computer whiz ally. The relationship between those two characters might just be my favorite bromance in the MCU. Right up there with Thor and Hulk, Captain America and Bucky slash Falcon, Iron Man and Rhodey. Their chemistry is authentic and genuine. It's the glue that holds this entire show together. The rest of the cast is great too. In fact, this might be the strongest ensemble cast of any MCU TV series. Amber Rose Reva, Ben Barnes, Jamie Ray Newman, Michael Nathanson all give really solid performances. Same with Daniel Weber, who plays a former Marine dealing with PTSD and becomes mixed up in some violent and dangerous ideologies. In fact, his character is really similar to another character that he played, Lee Harvey Oswald in 1122-63. Speaking of PTSD, the show does a really good job at tackling this very real issue. It confronts it head on and shows how war and violence affect different people. We all deal with traumatic events in our own way, and this show portrays that perfectly, which adds to its authenticity. What we were doing was wrong. You did what you were supposed to do, right? Now the only person you're punishing is yourself. Although I will say when this show tackles political issues, it's not as effective. Their efforts are admirable, but the political overtones are just distracting and they lack subtlety. Another knock I have, not just on The Punisher, but on the MCU Netflix shows in general, is that it's way too long. I feel like if you condensed it just a little bit, you could easily make it 8 or 9 episodes. Anyway, in terms of action and fight sequences, The Punisher more than delivers. Just think of how brutal his fight scenes were in Daredevil, and then multiply it by a hundred. Since Frank Castle is very human, and his only superpowers are being able to kill people and take an extreme beating, you feel every single hit, shot, and stab. The fight scenes in this are some of the best and most gripping that I've ever seen, not just on TV, but in film as well. But be warned, if you have a weak stomach, this show might be tough to watch, especially late in the season. But for what it's worth, the writers do a great job at showing the consequences of violence. Anyway, at the end of the day, I can confidently say that this is the best Marvel Netflix show thus far, and I absolutely loved Daredevil and really enjoyed Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and The Defenders. But The Punisher is set apart by its humanness and authenticity. It does its own thing, and it doesn't even really feel like a superhero show. It's more like a gritty revenge thriller with believable, complex, and fleshed out characters. Characters. I'd even go as far as saying that it's the best MCU project to be released this year. And that's not a knock on the Defenders, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, or Thor Ragnarok. I really enjoyed all of those. That just goes to show how good The Punisher is. This is one of the most challenging and captivating comic book adaptations ever made. The Punisher? He's dead. Just look like the work of a dead man to you. So, I give it 9 out of 10 stars, and I can't wait to see where this character goes next. I have no idea how they're going to be able to top season 1, 
but this show has earned my trust, so I'm along for the ride regardless. Anyway, what did you think of The Punisher? What did you think of my review? Let me know in the comment section. Also, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross. Thank you.